Hi everybody, today I'm going to do a little video about persecution, and I'm talking about spiritual persecution, not necessarily physical persecution that we all know goes on around the world for people who follow Christ, and that's simply because most people in this world are of their father, the devil. They are the devil's agents, unless they have been born again of spirit, uh, because being a Christian, a true follower of Jesus Christ, is truly spiritual. And what I've learned in my life <clears throat> is that one of the things that I always experienced was persecution for his name's sake. And it's, I used to think that was just when you talked about Jesus, you were persecuted for his name's sake. And that certainly could be the case. However, it goes much deeper than that. As the, elect, as the elect, the people that are elect toward salvation, the people that Jesus calls unto himself as a possible son or daughter of the Lord, is uh, not our doing. It is God's doing by grace. And he moves upon each individual that he chooses, the ecclesia called by name, um, into his church. He said, I will build my church. It's not man building a church for God. It is God simply building his church by spirit. And if you're elect of God and chosen of God, it's been my experience that you will uh, have persecution for his namesake because Jesus Christ, the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, resides um, within you once you have come to the point of um, salvation. Um, but before that point even, God uh, orchestrates events to bring people to the point of repentance of, um, you know, his uh, sacrifice for those who he has called on the cross and um, I don't want to be too long-winded about this so I'm just going to move on one thing that I noticed <clears throat> as a child is that I experienced spiritual events in my life and one of the greatest um, trials that I had in spiritual events was the adversary the devil and I believe that Satan has an idea because he's been watching mankind for thousands of years on just who is the Lord's, who is a sheep and who is not a sheep, who is a goat and who is a sheep. A sheep is, of course, God's followers. A goat is, of course, Satan's followers. And I'm talking about on a spiritual level. Now, I'm not saying you can't be a moral and good, outstanding citizen and not be a Christian, because that's certainly not the case. God has used people that, um, through history, that are very moral people and um, um, conscientious people to do his work. Um, in the Old Testament, the Lord said that Pharaoh was raised up for his purpose. Now, I'm not saying that Pharaoh was a wonderful man, but all people throughout history have a place um, in God's master plan. But for the elect's sake is why that Jesus came. And one thing I've noticed is when you have spiritual events in your life and from the adversary, I used to have... Um, all sensations when I was a child of uh, being tormented, like broom handles poking me from underneath the bed. I lived in an area um, that I, I believe had a lot of spiritual activity, demonic activity. Um, things used to fall off uh, or fly off the shelf uh, when I'd go into the uh, into the into our cellar terrifying things, things that just scare me to death. Doors would slam with no wind going through. I had uh, terrible demonic 
um, type of oppression when I was a child. And when I'd run up to my parents, who were very uh, involved in the church, they would simply say, well, it's your imagination. Uh, go back to sleep. And uh, I dare say that I even had a witness, uh, my brother, to uh, a poltergeist phenomenon that, uh, that um, happened in my bedroom. But um, amongst all this kind of spiritual activity, the, the greatest, the most uncomfortable thing was, I believe, because I was the Lord's and I was getting all kinds of opposition in the spiritual world. And people that claim his name, um, a lot of them, or I should dare say most of them, had no idea um, what spiritual events uh, uh, occur in a believer's life or can occur in a believer's life because Satan knows who you are and he knows who his people are and for the most part he really doesn't bother with his own people but he does uh, like to be the butcher on the sheep and this is all something that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, orchestrates in the believer's life to bring them to the point of salvation. Now we have a choice to make once we come to the Lord Jesus Christ as far as our own understanding is concerned and that is how do we follow him. For years I tried to follow the Lord within systematic theology, church system. I was uh, for a short period of time in leadership in a local church body. I um, sent away for testing to become an ordained minister uh, and I uh, I sent the work in basically that I did for six years in street ministry and the things that I learned doing our uh, home Bible studies and uh, you know church history and what what the church considers foundational blocks of Christianity but Again, most of this is really not the Lord's concern. The Lord's concern is to choose his own people and to nurture them as they grow in obedience to him. And this has been the toughest thing for me to understand because in my heart of hearts, I've always known um, the truth from a lie. And I found that in my life, um, I was oftentimes considered politically incorrect, uh, especially in the 60s and the 70s, uh, where the family unit um, entered into a lot of destructive behaviors. And I knew these things were wrong on the inside. And people, even church people, would like, well, you're kind of a fanatic, aren't you? You're kind of, you know, you have issues. You had this. Well, yes, I did. And the reason why is because the Spirit of God resided within me, and I chose to follow him. Whereas these other people, in my opinion, just had a religious, uh, devout religious spirit amongst them, but they don't truly have the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the ways you can tell if you have the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is you will be an oddball. You will be rejected. You will be persecuted because of Christ within you for His name's sake. People that don't have that don't um, receive the truth of God and the Spirit, sons of God, that are led of the Spirit of God. So they don't have that persecution. People don't understand them because those people are not of the same spirit and they don't have the Holy Spirit within them. And people get very upset when a true Christian recognizes, 1 John 4, who their brothers and sisters are and they are not amongst them. Um, and, the, and the biggest problem that I've ever had is with churchmen, church people. Church people have a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. 
They have a lot of times very good theology and very good intellectual understanding, but yet that will never replace and cannot replace the Holy Spirit and dwelling within the child of God. The child of God does nothing to earn that um, position. It is by grace and the election of God through grace that some are given a chance towards salvation. And what we have to do after that, and Jesus talked about the parable, the different types of grounds, the sower and the seeds. We um, are tested in life. The word of God comes in the gospel and it falls to stony ground or falls to thorny ground. You know, when you read these different parables Jesus was giving. And the Bible also tells us, Jesus told us that if you abide in him, he abides in you. And... Um, we are pruned, you know, children of God are pruned or are um, corrected before um, children of the world. And oftentimes children of the world aren't corrected at all, except by their natural parents, hopefully. But God corrects his children. God prunes his children. But we can be disobedient children. And, you know, it's almost like being disowned. If you decide to totally be disobedient when the when the Holy Spirit convicts you of a sin within your own personal life, whatever it is, and you continually turn back to that with disregards of what the Holy Spirit is telling you within, you will be cut off and burnt eventually. Now, if we're, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, if we confess these things unto him, and this is all spiritual stuff, this is not religious stuff. This is not sitting in a confessional made of wood uh, talking to another human being. The problem is men want to be God. These are Pharisees and Sadducees just like Jesus Christ and the Apostles had to deal with in the old days. Men are not God. We are supposed to be obedient if we have the Holy Spirit in it to the Lord Jesus Christ's voice within us. And we have to learn in maturity how to follow him. If anything distracts from that, it is not of God. This is why Jesus says in the end days, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. And of course, knowing there is like the knowing we have in marriage. And of course, marriage, a man and a woman represents Christ in the church. Um, so all these things fit together uh, for an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ should we choose to be engaged in that marriage and should we choose to enter into the marriage feast in the end days. The scripture tells us that many will strive to enter, but many will not be able to. It also talks about the virgins keeping their oil, their lamps full of oil. These are all pictures of the church, the ecclesia, the called ones. Who is faithful and who is not? Who follows Christ? And Matthew the scribe says, Master, what much shall I do to follow you? And he said, well, the birds have their nests in the air, the foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That's almost like saying, I don't fit any into any denomination is what Jesus Christ was saying. I don't fit into any man-made structure, any theology. You simply follow me as my disciple. And of course, later on in that passage, the man asked to go and bury his father, and Jesus replies, let the dead bury their own dead. This is talking about spiritual conditions. The man's father wasn't even dead yet. He was talking about his inheritance. He was talking about something of the world that would make him comfortable. Uh, and we all know the story about the rich young ruler that could not give up things. These are all conditions of the heart. God tests our heart to see if we're going to follow him or if we are going to follow something else. And the church is the biggest anti-Christ um, organization um, that I've had the problem of dealing with because men want you to follow them. It's just like the scribes and Pharisees in the Old Testament. 
men want you to follow them. Jesus says, follow me. And for years I tried to do this. I thought I was following Christ. I thought, oh, I have to find a local fellowship, a local body, a local uh, body of believers. But the problem is, by spirit, most of those people are not believers. They are counterfeit believers. They have a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. And you only discern that by spirit, not by theology, not by seminary degrees, not by the intellect at all, but by spirit, by knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and following him in spirit. And now that I've decided to do that, I come at terrible odds with my family, the church body locally, and it's because I am hard after the Lord Jesus Christ in my spirit. I can hear him, and I can follow him, and for years he whispered to me, he wooed me, over here, Roland, follow me, follow me, follow me. And then one day the lights came on after my NDE, and I, start, I started to realize that I can indeed follow him. And the problem is most of these people don't even know him or won't listen to him in obedience to follow him. No, they would rather do sacrifice rather than be obedient if they are children of God in their hearts. And this is a false church. And this false church, and there's people who have never been born again that are just religious, but this false church will kill a child of God. You will starve to death. You, they, will, they will feed on you if you have something the Lord Jesus Christ, just like aphids on a vine. They will suck that life-giving uh, sap out of your body. They will destroy you spiritually. No, you have to learn how to follow the Lord Jesus Christ personally if you belong to him. Now, it's fine to have fellowship if they're true fellows. If you know by Spirit 1 John 4, they are true fellows, tr uh, the true church, if you will, then it's fine to fellowship with them. But if you're fellowshipping with people that you don't recognize have the same experience of you in the Lord Jesus Christ, then chances are they're false brethren or they are at least broad road brethren. They've taken the broad road to be comfortable within the world so they don't have to give up something within their spirit to listen to the Lord. It's a lot easier to fit into the world if you don't follow Christ. And I never understood why I never got along with people, even at work. I never understood why I was so persecuted. I would do a good job, a very good, a good job, best job that I could, and yet people would resent me and hate me. But this was a spiritual truth. This is a spiritual thing. When I was in church leadership, I did better than anybody else there intellectually at the time. And the Lord Jesus Christ spoke through me in power, and the men went back in their seats. But they didn't want me around because they didn't want Christ in me around. And this is a real deal. This is not a spiritual pride thing. This is not something that I've, I've made up uh, to say, oh, I'm so close to Jesus, but you're not. No, the fact of the matter is either you have him or you do not. And a true brethren has to be able to recognize who has him and who does not. And I've always been put down and marginalized because, in fact, of Christ in me. And this is what the Bible is truly talking about. If they hated me, they will hate you also. So, if you've experienced rejection because of the spirit of Christ that is within you, Dear brethren, be advised, you're not alone. There's many of us, but there's very few of us. Most of them are false believers. Most of them have a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. Most of them will not be obedient. They, they, go, they go down the broad road, and they're going down the broad road towards their own destruction. And uh, I would just encourage anybody that has any questions about what I'm speaking about, to pray to the Lord to show you his face. Show to the Lord, pray to the Lord to show you how to follow him. Because if you know him, you know what I'm talking about. You have experienced the Lord. You have heard the Lord speak to your heart. And if, if it seems to you that you don't quite fit in, well, maybe the problem isn't with you. 
you know, I was always told the problems with me not fitting in. Well, yeah, in a sense that's true, but most of the world's going to go to hell. It's going to go to Hades when they die. Only the elect, only the ones that choose to follow the Lord after their initial salvation will be able to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And it costs you. It costs you. But praise God if you're one of the few people that have been shown the truth of God and been made a son or daughter and God rejoice for that persecution because it shows the mark on you of Christ and that you're different. God bless you, brother and sisters, and keep on pushing towards the kingdom of heaven of the Lord Jesus Christ within you. And remember that the scripture is really only talking about true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. The rest of the world has learned up the scriptures and academia, but it does them no good except for moral living. But it is only written to a true child of God. So if the scriptures really jump off the page and say something to you, chances are that's because you have the Lord Jesus Christ in you and you are trying to follow him. And he knows it. And uh, nobody's going to snatch you out of his hand. But you have a choice to make. Are we going to follow him? Are we going to be obedient? Or are we going to take the broad road which leads to destruction? God bless. Good day.